your life just needs saving Do the wise thing Call Wise Man Lawyers Does your life just need saving Do the wise thing Call Wise Man Lawyers Don't face that court alone Let the wise man team get you back on the road Does your life just need saving Do the wise thing Call the wise man team Black Wise Man Lawyers Alright, so now win a magistrate's court. Client received a six month suspension notice from Queensland Transport for having exceeded the speed limit by more than 40 kilometres per hour. So basically, uh, he was driving along, entered Roadworks, uh, the speed limit dropped to 80, and he received a ticket for doing uh, a bit more than uh, 40 kilometres per hour over that, so mid, mid 120s. Um, what happened there was uh, when someone exceeds the speed limit uh, by more than 40 kilometres per hour, uh, it triggers a uh, six month high speed suspension notice from Queensland Transport. Uh, you'll also get eight demerit points. So what happens on, in some instances is uh, where a person then runs out of points due to those eight points, they'll also get a uh, three month demerit point suspension notice. So that didn't occur today because my client uh, had uh, you know, pretty good traffic history and didn't run out of points, so they're able to absorb those eight demerit points. But uh, in the event that he uh, did exceed his demerit points, uh, as I said, you get that three month suspension notice and the six month high speed suspension notice. And what you need to do is, with that three month uh, demerit point suspension notice, it'll ask you to choose between a three month, as I said, demerit point suspension or what's called a uh, 12 month good driving behaviour period. So if you elect a good 12 month good driving behaviour period, what happens is you get a fresh two bonus points uh, and you've got to be of good behaviour for 12 months, meaning, uh, therefore, meaning uh, the name good driving behaviour period. Uh, if you can go those 12 months um, without losing those points, that'll be the end of it. But if you do uh, lose those two points, you'll also get a, a six month demand report suspension. So, anyway, going back a step. Um, had he have lost those points, he would have had to have elected good driving behaviour period because to apply for a high speed uh, special hardship licence, you can't have any other concurrent suspensions. And uh, if he didn't elect that good driving behaviour period, he would have had that concurrent three month demerit point suspension, which would have meant he, any application for a high speed special hardship licence would have failed. Uh, again, that wasn't the case today, but if it was the case, he would have had to have elected the good driving behaviour period. But again, it's a moot point, that wasn't the case today. Uh, just going back a step, when I talk about a special hardship licence, as I said, when someone gets a suspension notice from points of transport, they can make an application to the court for special permission to drive during the suspension period for work and sometimes medical purposes only. So uh, he's received a suspension notice. Uh, he's obviously rang my firm, uh, basically, I drafted affidavit materials for him to sign, uh, about an eight page affidavit for him to sign, talking about what he does, why he needs his license to do it, uh, his financial situation, uh, the financial difficulties he'll suffer if he loses his license and therefore his job. Uh, you know, what happened on the day in question, we got him to do a reformatory course that we get all of our clients to do. I spoke in the affidavits that I drafted uh, on his behalf about what he said he'd learnt. Uh, I also drafted about a four page affidavit up for his employer to sign, again, saying what he does, why he needs his license to do it, and that he will lose his job if he loses his license. Uh, those affidavits were drafted and filed uh, with Winner Magistrates Court on the first day of the suspension. Uh, they gave us a court date, which was about six weeks later. Uh, the documents were then filed with Queensland Transport. Queensland Transport temporarily uh, reinstated my client's license until midnight the day before the court date, meaning midnight last night. So the suspension was paused until midnight last night. He and I attended court. Uh, we grabbed a conference room beforehand. I ran through my submissions, uh, what he could expect uh, to happen in the courtroom. Um, we went in. Uh, basically, when uh, you make these type of applications, you're expected to have covered all of your uh, points in the affidavits. And if you try to raise anything that uh, hasn't already been addressed, so I don't know if you change jobs uh, between filing the application and going to court, well, 
it's not going to happen if you haven't drafted supplementary affidavits, for example. So you can't arrive and start talking about something new. You can only talk about what's already in the affidavit materials. That's what I did. I guided the magistrate through, um, you know, why I think it would be appropriate to deem him a fit and proper person to be given a second chance and also uh, why it would be appropriate to consider or deem him to suffer a severe financial hardship if he lost his licence. Um, I did speak uh, at length, uh, more for completeness rather than any kind of sort of hostility. There was no, there was a certain amount of resistance, but it wasn't hostile in any way. But sometimes court matters go longer than others simply because, uh, you know, the magistrate wants to be thorough in their decision or they want to, um, you know, make sure they're crystal clear on what's being put to them. So while it wasn't a quick matter, we are in there for about, you know, I don't know, 15 minutes. Um, but ultimately, uh, it was, you know, it went well. Short version is uh, I was successful in persuading the magistrate to grant the application. So basically what happens now is the magistrate granted the application. He was given a uh, the order, which is basically a document formalising the words that the magistrate speaks. So I direct that you've been permitted to drive during the suspension for work purposes only during the hours of X, uh, blah, blah, blah. That gets uh, incorporated, as I said, into an order document. My client, you know, he can't, uh, that doesn't allow him to drive. What it does is it allows Queensland Transport to issue him with the uh, hardship licence. So what he needs to do now, I, I debriefed him at the front of the courthouse, but he's now on his way uh, on foot to Queensland Transport. He'll go in, he'll renew his licence. Uh, his licence will now have the hardship code on it. Uh, and for the next six months, he can only drive pursuant to the terms of that order. I won't go into too much more detail now. Uh, but obviously the client's very happy, very relieved. Uh, you know, he's a, a painter and decorator, so without a licence, it goes without saying, he'd lose everything. Um, I'm Andrew Wiseman. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Andrew Wiseman from Wiseman Lawyers, Queensland's only truly dedicated drug, alcohol and traffic events law firm. If you face loss of licence, loss of vehicle imprisonment, or anything in between, at any court in Queensland, we can and will help you today. This is our specialty. This is all we do. Give us a call, 1300 947 352. I look forward to helping you resolve your issue today. Don't face that court alone. Let the wise man team get you back on the road.